not had the opportunity to be taught by her in class, but um, my fellow students, I just graduated last year, adore her, and I've just learned that my neighbor also is jealous that I even got to walk the halls with her, so you are very lucky today. Let me give her a quick introduction that's not so cheesy. Here we go. <laughs> Dr. Susie Cox is an ass assistant professor in the School of Education at Un Un U I stutter. Utah Valley University, specializing in educational um, psychology and technology integration. She is also a mother of two and an avid reader of young adult fantasy fiction. Enjoy. Thank if you need anything, let me know. I'm just going to be right here. Thank you. And the first thing to know is that I am going to go ahead. I don't know if you noticed as we were starting out, but I'm going to screencast this session. So what that means is that I'm recording the audio and I'm recording what's going on on my screen. So by the time we're done, we'll have a recording. I'll pop it up on my website, which is just drsuzycox.com. So D-R-S-U-Z-Y-C-O-X. Um, and then you can watch it over again when you're actually making your own story later so that you have something to refer to. Okay, so that'll all be there for you. So the title of my presentation today was Sharing the Love of Reading. And really some of my inspiration came from watching my own kids. I have a six-year-old boy in first grade and a ten-year-old girl in fifth grade. Um, and my daughter is basically me approximately a foot shorter. So she loves to be the center of attention, and she loves to teach, and she loves to be in control of everything. It's really lovely. But what I see is her sharing her love of reading with her little brother. She's sitting down and reading stories with him. Um, and so I wanted to make that a little bit more permanent, but not in a difficult way. And so what I came up with is um, something that we've all experienced. But we experienced it in a slightly different manner. So if you think back to, oh, let's say the 80s. Do you remember these things called audio cassettes? <laughs> they were pretty groovy. All right. Um, we used to listen to books on tape, right? And we would sit down with our little primers, and we would listen to the books on tape, and it would go ding. And we were supposed to change the page. Do we remember this? Mm -hmm. All right. We're going to make those today. We're going to make them in digital form as MP3s that we can then put on iTunes or on a CD for kids to take home, or we can put them on our class website, the library website, or we can just have them at home. And then our kids can sit there with their little iPods plugged into their ears reading a book. Okay? So that's what we're planning on making today. should be super fun. You can, of course, go in and enhance them with images as well if you want to. And if we have a little time at the end, I'll show you how you can do that. All right. So here we go, sharing the love of reading. And first we're going to talk about why we might use audiobooks. It seems like kind of an old technology in comparison to some of the other things that we could be doing. But there's really quite a, a bit of um, evidence as to their efficacy. And so I wanted to talk about that just briefly. First of all, um, pretty much every bit of research that's been done on audiobooks shows that they improve reading and academic overall academic performance. So the use of audiobooks in the classroom really does help kids learn to read. And it helps to improve their academic performance because they're better understanding what they're reading. So that's extremely important. Part of that is because they're actually hearing the pronunciation of the words by an expert reader while they're going through it. Uh, part of it, though, we think, is because um, the majority of today's learners and today's readers are visual and kinesthetic, right? So they need the hands-on kind of stuff. Um, but they're also what we call global learners, meaning that they need that kind of multi-sensory experience. Uh, another really interesting finding of some recent research was that, uh, you know, I, I was mentioning to some people as, as we were trickling in that book readership is down 20% in the current generation of adolescents. So 20% less actual reading of books. Now they are reading, but they're reading text messages and Facebook posts and tweets, right? So their, their total number of words read per day is not down. It's just book readership. Well, just books is a huge deal because stories are extremely important for social development and moral development and all kinds of other things. So we, we want to keep them reading stories. But when you ask them, guys, why aren't you reading books? Their response is, when I read a book, I feel isolated. If you think about 
the experience of reading a book. And I know for many of us, we're like, when I read a book, I feel isolated, and it's awesome. <laughs> you know, we're like hiding behind our book. But that's the thing. It's actually a physical barrier that goes around them. And so when they're reading the book here, they're not looking at their computer screen to see if their friend is IMing them on Facebook. They're not checking their cell phone to see if they've gotten a text message. They're not doing a lot of the things that they that now are their social sphere, right? They're here. And so by using the audiobooks, that brings it into a more multi-sensory, almost social experience as they're able to listen to someone speaking to them as they're reading. So it adds this kind of extra layer to it, makes them feel a little less isolated when they're doing that. Now, we can probably see pretty quickly the benefits of, re of audiobooks for English language learners. Right, that they have that modeling of the accent and the pronunciation and all of that kind of stuff. But actually, the findings are equally good for native English speakers as well. So it's improving both groups' academic performance, which is really, I mean, how often do you find an intervention that works really well for pretty much every audience? This is really fantastic. Another great thing about it, looking at the research, is that it's, it's a proven way to recapture enthusiasm for learning how to read. Um, they're pretty excited. Kids are generally pretty excited in kindergarten and first grade about learning to read. Uh, depending on their experience in kindergarten and first grade, they can keep being enthusiastic or they start to drop if they've experienced maybe some learned helplessness. They feel like they're never going to get it, kinds of things. By fourth grade, there's a pretty serious drop, right? We all know that, the big fourth grade drop. And so this is really a way to rekindle that excitement about reading, about learning to read, um, both through listening to audiobooks and following along with them and in creating their own. So those are some things we're going to talk about. And then the other fun thing that I don't think we often think about as a kind of side effect of audiobooks is that it helps develop effective listening skills. So it really does help kids sit and listen and interpret meaning and hear inflection in the voice and things like that. So that's another great benefit. So our next question then is who can make them? We've got Brianne over here. She told me she's teaching first grade, so this is going to be way over their heads. <laughs> no, it's not at all. All right, so my first uh, group that can make audiobooks are young children who have mastered a book and want to share their accomplishment. Would you like to hear one? Okay. This would be... No, but a cousin may tell the moment when you hear the king turn the page. This is my six-year-old. And yes, he can make it himself. Of course, he could even speak words. Tootsie went on an errand today. Yep, that, that's his ding, he chose. The block, through the park, past the school, and into the laundromat. <coughs> Tootsie helped her daddy put the laundry into the machine. She even got to put the money into the machine. Then they left. But a block or so later, Trixie realized something. Trixie turned to her daddy and said, Echo Flag, Echo Pebble! That's right, replied her daddy. We're going home. Echo Flag, Echo Pebble! <laughs> said Trixie again. Blubble Pebble? Nerfy Flubby? Snurp. Now, please don't get fussy, said her daddy. Well, she had no choice. Trixie Bob. <laughs> she went boneless. She did everything she could to show how unhappy she was. By the time they got home, her, her daddy was unhappy too. As soon as Trixie, mommy, Opened the door, she asked, Where's Nuffle Bunny? The whole family ran down the block and they ran through the park. They zoomed past the school and into the laundromat. Tuxie's daddy looked for Nuffle Bunny and looked and looked. 
and looked. But Knuckle Bunny was nowhere to be found. So Strixie's daddy decided to look harder until... Knuckle Bunny! <laughs> and those were the first words Trixie ever said. The end. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so he's six and made it himself. Right? It is literally as simple as sitting down in front of the computer with a microphone and hitting record and stop. Okay? All right. So we'll get there. So that's one group. Great way to do this and a great incentive for children. When you've mastered this book, then you can go ahead and make a recording that we'll put on the class website or you can send to your grandma or you can share with your friends or it can become part of the school library so that if another child checks the book out, they can use it. It's all there. Okay. All right. So some other audiences. One of my absolute favorites. Grandparents reading their favorite children's stories for their grandbabies. Right. What a fantastic way to preserve great grandma's voice for our children. Um, and again, I know there are certain people among us who feel that they can't learn to use technology. <laughs> okay. But it can be done. And in fact, you can actually do this over the phone. So you could literally put the microphone in your house up to the phone and record as the grandmother or the grandfather reads the story and then simply splice in the sound effect for turning the page. Okay, so these are not difficult to do at all and they're just some fantastic uses for them. All right, another possibility is for older children to share their love of reading with younger children at school or at home. So what they can do, I mean, a lot of us, um, a lot of, of children have buddy reader classes where maybe a fourth grader or a fifth grader will go down and read with a first grader or a kindergartner. And so this is another thing that they could be doing. They can read their favorite picture books, record them, and then that could go into the buddy library that the younger children could use either at the, the public library or the school library or just between classes. Okay. And we've got one more possibility that I've put on here. Families can do service projects uh, for schools or libraries. So they, the families could sit down and record these as a, as a service project. Or the school or the library could have a service day where if people come in and record these stories and then those become part of the library. So my daughter and I sat down and did one. She chose the book. This is one of her favorites. And I'll just play part of this one for you. Do Princesses Wear Hiking Boots by Carmela Lavina Coyle, illustrated by Mike Gordon. When you hear the ding, turn the page. Mommy, do princesses wear hiking boots? When they wish to take the scenic routes. Do princesses ride tricycles? Yes, even two-wheel bicycles. All right, so you can get the point of that one, right? So we did a you read to me, I read to you kind of thing, and then we went through that book together. So again, another really fun purpose and a great, great thing to just do as a family. It's really, really fun. So the message is anybody can do this. You sit down with a computer and a microphone, and you're good to go. Speaking of which, what do I need? All right, so if you need a list, here it is. It's very long. <laughs> yep. And in fact, I'd go so far as to argue you don't even need all that. This will work. Okay? If you have a smartphone, open it up. Then you might have something like the voice memos app. Right? This one's pretty tricky. You open it up. See this red button? You push that. And when you're done, you push stop. Okay? Not too bad. You can make the ding with your mouth if you don't want to put in a sound effect, right? So you can just say ding, or you can say turn the page. So you don't even have to have much technical proficiency to do this. If you have any kind of recording device, you're good to go. Okay? Um, I also have, I should have brought it for you, I have like an old iPod Classic, like the big ones, right? Uh, you can buy a little $15 
attachment microphone. You stick on the bottom of that and it'll do the same thing. Okay, so you don't need the super expensive stuff either. All right, there are also things like digital voice recorders that are even cheaper that you can buy. So, speaking of the software, notice I'm saying free software. I do not believe in anything that costs lots of money, especially for schools, teachers, parents, librarians. We don't want to spend a bunch of money. So, our options are, if you're using a Windows-based machine, there's a little program called Audacity. It's a free download, and that will allow you to do the audio recordings. And this is if you want to go kind of whole hog with putting in the sound effects and all that kind of stuff. Okay? You could also use um, Windows Movie Maker, and that's particularly true if you want to add some visuals to it. So you want to add some pictures from the book, for example, to go along with it. You could make it into a full digital story. Okay. So Windows Movie Maker is another option. That's going to be free on any PC. And another option, if you want a third, just for pick, is Photo Story Free. And that's another one that you could add pictures to. All free. I personally believe that Macs are going to take over the world. So if you're using a Mac, the program is GarageBand, and it comes installed on any Mac. Okay. So what I'll do is preview for you the steps, and then we're actually going to create a story here in, here in class. Okay? It's that easy. So here we go. The steps are, first, find a book. So for our story, we're going to read an oldie but goodie, Jam Brett's Hedgy Loves to Read. Okay. Next thing to do, plug in your microphone. Now, some of us don't even have to do that, right? If you have a Mac, or an, a lot of PCs now have built-in microphones as well, then you're good to go already. Okay, I personally invest in, because I do this a lot, right, uh, I invest in a headset with a microphone attached, and the reason for that is because it looks cool. <laughs> no, the reason for that is because I can't move away from and towards the microphone, okay? If I'm recording here, I could be like really loud and then really quiet. That's going to be on the recording for you later. Won't you enjoy that? Okay, so I can move around, and it'll pick up more ambient sound, so it sounds a little echoey and stuff. If I want the cleanest quality audio, then I would get something like this. You can get them anywhere from $10 to $100, depending on what level you want. Um, mine has a USB connection, so that it's nice and fast and clean and stuff, rather than using the jacks. Okay, so just a little USB connector, plug it right in. Okay, next step, choose a sound. Okay, so if you want a little sound transition between the pages, and if you'll notice the recording my kids made, I took out some spaces so it would go a little faster so you could just hear it go all the way through. You might want to put in some space in between for the page turn to actually happen. <laughs> okay, but uh, if you're using Audacity, if you're working on a PC, you'll need to go out and find a sound effect. And there are lots of free sound effect websites that you can go to. Uh, again, if you go to my website, I will put a couple of links up there for you so you can grab some free sound effects. Okay? Uh, if you're using the, the Mac, there are sound effects built into GarageBand. So you just grab whichever one you want. Okay? Now, my preference is that you then go through and record a page at a time. But like I said, if you want to just have grandma read the story through over the phone, we can do that too and then just edit it and chop it down. So either way works. I'm, I'll show you both up here so that you can see what I mean by those two. Then you're going to save it as an MP3 file so anybody can listen to it. You can upload it to iTunes. You can do whatever you'd like. And then you share it with your friends. So, let's do it. I know, look how mad it is. Okay, so let's actually make one. I'm going to open GarageBand. And I think I may need to recruit some voice talent. Because... <laughs> she's, she's like ratting out her friend over here. That's because she's a storyteller. Excellent. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, good, good. She's following along, so she's excused. <laughs> No, 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 no. I'm learning to use technology. Yes, yes. We have to have the positive attitude. Okay. So here's what we do. And again, I'm recording this. So if you want to watch it later, you're welcome to. But I am going to show you on the Mac since that's what I have. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a voice project as my new project. This is the starting screen on GarageBand, so I'm not hiding anything from you. And I'm going to choose that. And then I just name it. All right, I'm going to pop that on the desktop and create. I wish we had you in a lab so we could all just make one. That would be way more fun, but. Okay, so this is basically what GarageBand looks like. It gives us a couple of tracks so we get to feel all fancy like we know what we're doing. But we actually don't need any more than one for this project if we don't want to have more than one. Okay, I'm not a man. So I'm going to get rid of that mail track. I don't know, I kind of sound like one, maybe. Uh, but let me just give you a quick tour. If we go in the file area, we've got our basic kind of tools in here. This is for the actual project. So what we'll end up with is a project where we do all of the editing. And then we'll export it and save it as the MP3. Okay, So that at any time, we can go back and make changes to the initial project. So when we go into the file menu here, this is for the project itself. If we go into the edit menu right now, there aren't a lot of options. We'll use some of these later, okay? But we can copy and paste and kind of the basic stuff is in here. Then if we go into track, we can see some different types of tracks we can add. So we can add new tracks, we can take away tracks we don't need, all that kind of stuff. So if we're creating kind of a multi-layered sound, if we wanted to have music going on at the same time that we are reading the story, for example, then we'd need two tracks for that, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that mail track. All right. In the controls area, there are a couple of tools that are kind of fun. Ducking might be important to you. Ducking is where we turn down one set of audio so it doesn't overpower another. Okay. So for example, if I do have that music playing at the same time as I'm reading the story, I would want to duck the music, make it quieter than my voice. All right, in here we have some tools that we will be using in a few minutes. We've got the loop browser, uh, the media browser, and the editor. So those are tools that we can get into to pull additional elements into or make changes to our project. So we'll get into those in a bit. And then these are just some different views that we can have down at the very bottom of our screen. So if I want to have the time down there, for example, I could. The share menu is where we would go to actually save it out. I don't have a project going yet, so that this will come in time. But notice that if you have an iTunes account or an iWeb account, you can actually send these straight out. So you can send them straight to iTunes. If you're doing this for your library or for your classroom and you have an account set up for those, just send it right out there. Okay. I personally always export it first. So I export it to my computer so I have my own pristine copy that nobody can touch. And then I'll export it any place else I want to, okay? And then here's where you could burn it to CD. If you wanted to create for your first graders, for example, uh, you send home the book and the CD with the student, and they could go home with those, okay? All right. These are tools we won't get into today, but they're super fun. You can play piano on here. Can I have a jump drive as well? Yes, definitely. Yep. All right, so let's begin by... First of all, I, this first screen that we're going to show, because I'm on a female basic track, I said I was using a vocal instrument, right? It wants to know if I want to put some cool effects on my voice. So let me just show you what those are like. Mm -hmm. Told you, I look so cool, huh? Like telemarketer. Love it. Okay. So if I were to record right now, can anybody tell me how I might go about recording? The R button works. Okay, what else? Yeah, big red button. Okay, so we've got a couple of options there, whether you're a keyboard person or a mouse person, right? Okay, and then when I'm done, let me take these off so I can hear myself. Um, it's best to hit the space bar when you're done. That'll stop everything. 
Okay, so I record and then hit space when I'm ready to stop. So this is what it would look like. Hello, I am so awesome. Okay, so I just recorded that little bit and we can see, yep, it actually got my voice. I've got fluctuations in the wave pattern there. Um, and that little piece is what I've recorded. Now if I play that back, and if you notice over here on the right, I've got the female basic effect on. This is what it sounds like. Hello, I am so awesome. Okay, do you hear the echoey? Okay. Um, I could make myself sound like I have helium breath. So talk about motivational for first graders, right? <laughs> All right, they have a pretty fun time. The mouse would be my kid's absolute favorite. All right, <laughs> so they can play with these, which is really kind of fun and motivational for them. So not only have they mastered the book and they get to play with the computer, but they get to make their voice sound like a mouse. Come on. Um, I personally turn this to no effects when I'm doing an audiobook so that it just comes through clean. So that's what my kids did when they were doing theirs. They came in, turned it to no effects, and then started their recording. Okay. You can turn it to no effects later, so if I go back now and play it for you, you'll notice all the effects are gone. Hello, I am so awesome. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna select that and just hit the delete button. So anytime I mess up, Delete. <coughs> Nothing tricky, right? Okay, so we'll drag, this is our little playhead. Do you remember VCRs and playheads? Mm -hmm. All right, we're gonna drag that back to the beginning. Wherever that playhead head is, that's where we're gonna record, okay? All right, does anybody wanna take a stab at the cover? We can take turns. Come on up, Jenny. Jenny's going to be brave. It's so, just because I want to wear these. Yeah, pretty much. You just want to look cool. Um, so what I, what I teach kids when we do this is that you're going to read the title. You need to read the name of the author and the illustrator. And don't forget to tell whoever's going to be reading the book that they need to turn the page when they hear the sound. Right? So that all needs to be in their little opening message. So Jenny, whenever you're ready, you're going to hit your record button there and then hit space bar when you're done. Hedgy loves to read. Illustrated. Oh, what's that other word? Crap. Can we stop it? Yes. <laughs> what do you do to stop? Oh, so pause. Yeah. Okay. She I messed mean, up. What space did she do? Bar. No, you don't say crap. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but she, she messed up, guys. Is it broken? Is the project broken? Author and illustrated. Delete. You just hit delete. Yeah. Just right now? Yeah. See, see how it's dark purple? That means it's selected. If it's light purple, it's not. Okay. And so to select it, I just select it? Yep. Just click it once. Brilliant. And hit delete. Okay. One more time. Drag your playhead back to the oh, beginning. Oh, drag my playhead back to the beginning. Yes, ma'am. And she paid me to act stupid. Yes, I did. <laughs> this is all a ruse. Okay. Go, go, go Written again. and illustrated, right? D okay. Yeah. Written, author, illustrated. Author... <laughs> Authored, authored and illustrated. Written by author illustrator Jan Brett. Oh, that's nice. I Here like we go. It. No, that sounds dumb. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Written and illustrated by Jan Brett. Here we go. Hedgy loves to read. Written and illustrated by Jan Brett. When you hear this sound, ding, turn the page. Don't forget to take the headphones off. Nothing worse than walking away from the podium with the headphones still attached. That would have been worse than saying crap. <laughs> All right. We did it. So if we play it back to the beginning. All right. We can turn up that track. Do you see this volume right here? We can turn that up right here to make it louder. Okay, so you can kind of play with some of these tools. We can play with talking more loudly into uh, the headset here, all kinds of stuff.
Okay. There's also a recording level, if you'll notice, over here on the right. So I can also turn that up if I want to make it louder or quieter if I happen to be a boisterous individual. Okay. Now, we could leave Jenny's ding or we could put in a sound effect. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a sound effect right where she said ding. So what that means is I'm going to have to cut this out. Now, what if we read and it's a really long page of the book and we make one mistake? Or, my favorite, and this never happens to me, one of my kids comes yelling down the stairs. <laughs> right in the middle of it. Yeah. Okay. GarageBand makes it pretty easy for us to go in and just cut out parts that we don't like. So that's groovy. So that what we're going to do is cut out where she says ding, and we'll replace that with the sound effect that we want to use. Okay? So I've put my playhead right here, right before she says ding. I know that's where it is because I was watching it while we were doing the playback. Okay? So I'm going to put it right there, right before she says ding. And I'm going to go into the edit menu, right? I want to make changes to something, so that means I go to edit. Click right there. And I've got this option now that's lit up, split. So what that's going to do is split my selected clip into two pieces. Okay? So I'm going to split it right there. And see, now we have two separate slices. I'm going to do that again right after she says ding. There we go. Now I've got three little bumps. What do I do with this bump? Woohoo! That was tough. Now, sound effect time. Also my children's favorite. Second only to the mouse voice. All right. So remember I told you that there was a place where we could go to add stuff to our audiobook, and that was under control. So we're going to go to control, and we're going to do show loop browser. Okay. And that gives us all of the stuff that's built into GarageBand that we can add to our piece. So there is all kinds of music that we could add in the background of it if we want background in the music of our story that we're reading, or music in the background. Um, I'm going to go see this little dude that looks like he's emitting radioactive waves from his head. Yeah, that's where we're going. This is the podcast uh, menu. And we get jingles and stingers and sound effects and all kinds of stuff in here. Stingers are fun, and that's what we're going to play with, actually. Stingers are the sound effects you hear on the radio. Like the whoop, whoop sounds. That I'm really good at mimicking them. Yeah? Very impressive. All right. But those are the little sounds that they use on the, on the radio all the time. Like an alarm sound. Does that one sound familiar? We heard it about 84 times on my son's. Okay, so we've got all kinds of these built in. And so depending on kind of the theme of your story, you could choose a sound effect that kind of matches the tone of that story to put in with it. Or you could just find something fairly standard. Okay. Let's do Some of these are pretty funny. Okay, let's see. i got to find one. I spend like hours just playing with these. It's kind of ridiculous. Do, 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 do. No, I don't like that one. That's weird. I think my son's favorite was the space log right there. We will just add... Oh, where was the one my daughter used? That one was cute. This one. Okay. So, I'm going to give myself a little space up here on the timeline to make sure I've got room for it. And all I do is click on it, hold down my mouse, right, and drag it up to where I stopped reading, right there. And now I can squish Jenny's reading back in. So now it'll sound like this. When you hear this sound, turn the page. Okay. All right. So we got to the end of the title, the cover. What should we do? Yeah, we need our sound, right? So again, we just drag it up. Pop. 
Done. Now you can leave some space on either side of that sound if you'd like to. You can leave just empty space just by dragging it over, which would give the kids a little extra time to actually make the page turn. So I could leave it maybe right there, drag this over and leave a couple of seconds of space so that they have time to turn the page as well. All right, next volunteer. I've mastered wait time. <laughs> I think just find a couple pages. Just a page of reading, yeah. Can you just copy and paste the initial sound? Yes, you can. So at this point, you could just copy that sound and paste it every place you want it. Okay. I'm, I'm like trying to do it for you. This see is me? the beginning. Oh, no, I skipped a page. Well, look at me. I know, I was like, that's a weird first sentence. Where do you want me to go? Just right here? Yeah. Okay. So you're going to hit that red button, and then you're going to hit space when you're done. Okay, now expect me to mess it up. Headphones. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That, that would be helpful. good. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, boy. It was a cold, sunny day. The perfect day to curl up with a good book, Hedgie thought. Excellent. Thank you so much. Okay. So, drag it up, right? Page turn. Nancy. Yes. You don't think I'm going to let you get away with not reading a page of my book, do you? <laughs> okay. Okay. Headphones on. Okay. And you're going to have my glasses. No. Do the thing. Okay. Do you want to push the buttons? Do you want me to do it? Please do it. Okay. Here we go. But which book should I read? Hedgie tried to decide while he warmed himself by the fire. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> Fran. Oh. oh, yeah. I See, cold. now if I know your name, you're in trouble. That's how it's going to work. I have a head cold, though. Nobody wants to listen to somebody with a head cold. <laughs> I tried to get my mom to do one for this, and she was like, I feel sick now. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> good excuse. All right. We're almost done. This is a really short book. That's why I chose it. I have to read all that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they gave you the longest one. Okay, you have to push the button. So okay. I'm going to make you. Okay. He thought about which book to read as he washed his dishes and cleaned his room. Finally, he chose his favorite one, a perfect book for a perfect day. Hedgie thought. He read all day long. And one more page. Come on up. Awesome. All right, I'll drag up our sound. Is Windows Media Player this user friendly? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite, yes. <laughs> For a PC, you can't. You can't? No. There are some comparable software packages that are cheap uh, that are this easy to use. Uh, the majority are um, quite, a, quite a bit more expensive, but I, I do have a list of a few that I can put on my website as well that are cheaper. Okay? All right. When you're ready. Okay. As he drifted off to sleep, Hedgie dreamed about all the wonderful things he had read in his favorite book. All right. Ladies, that's it. That's it. Okay. <laughs> so we drag this all the way back to the end. And play. Let's see. Let's make sure all our volume levels are up so we can hear it really well. And play. Hedgie loves to read. Written and illustrated by Jan Brett. When you hear this sound, turn the page. It was a cold, sunny day. The perfect day to curl up with a good book, Edgy thought. But which book should I read? Edgy tried to decide while he warmed himself by the fire. He thought about which 
book to read as he washed his dishes and cleaned his room. Finally, he chose his favorite one, a perfect book for a perfect day, Hedgy thought. He read all day long. As he drifted off to sleep, Hedgy dreamed about all the wonderful things he had read in his favorite book. There we go. Well done, people. Well done. All right. Now, what was the next step? Do you remember? We've got to export it. We've got to save it as an MP3 file because this is a GarageBand file. So it'll only open on somebody's computer if they have GarageBand installed. Okay? And then it'll look like this. All right. <laughs> so we're going to go to Share and Export Song to Disk. Okay, we're going to let it compress it. We want it to do that. And it'll let you choose between an AAC coder and encoder and an MP3 coder. We want to use the MP3 encoder because we know that will play on any machine. Right? MP3s will play on iPods, they'll play on PCs, they'll play on Macs, they'll play on anything. So we're going to leave that there and just say export. I love that it says creating the mix down. I want to know what that means, but it sounds like I should dance to it. <laughs> Makes me very excited. All right, and there it is, right there. Okay. All right, there's our MP3 file. So now that file right there could be put on a thumb drive emailed to someone, put on a CD, sent up to a website, put on iTunes, anything we want to do as far as our storage goes, okay? <coughs> All right. So any questions to this point? Please. Well, I just at the secondary level. Is this a type of software you could use to maybe do notes like a, a lecture or something like that if students are gone on the day that you do a Definitely. presentation or something like that so that they can get comments? Yep. Most definitely. And is it possible to set it up to it while you're actually giving the instruction so students can actually hear what other students are saying? Sure. So what you would do is just hit that red record button right as you start. And then you can go back and edit out stuff you don't want. Yeah, exactly right. Um, I actually use for that same purpose, I have my little iPod Classic, take it to class and just start it, and then I just import it into GarageBand when I'm done. Okay. So if I don't want my big clunky computer sitting there, I can do that. But like I said, while I'm doing this presentation, I'm using a piece of software called Camtasia to do the same thing, but it's recording my screen at the same time. Okay? That one you have to buy, though. Right. Bummer. Hey, so you said you do it on your iPod Classic. It doesn't work on a touch. Oh, yeah. It would work actually better on a touch. I just happen to have an old classic sitting around. So, yep, the touch, you can get the voice memo app. Voice memo app. Yep. Okay. Yep, or any voice recorder app generally works pretty well. Voice memos will import directly into iTunes. Yeah, which is great. Yes, sir. Okay, I was busy with my <laughs> taking, it, taking notes. Um, how did you put that sound into the title? So it's like. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's go through that process one more time. Okay. So let me pull GarageBand back up. That's probably the trickiest part of this whole process, right? So I'm going to drag down the playhead to the very end, give myself a little space. And we'll just record a little bit of nonsense here. All right, we're going to record a little bit of information. And oh my goodness, there's a space alien. And then we're going to go home. So I don't really want the space alien part. I'm going to put a sound effect in there. All right, so I drag my playhead back, and I can play to see exactly where I want it, and I'll use my space bar to stop it at just the right moment, okay? A little bit of information. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I know it's right before that loud part on there. Right there. Okay, so I put my playhead where I want to cut the clip. Go to Edit, and Split. Okay. Now, drag my playhead to the end of that piece of me yelling. And I could be more precise about it and find out exactly where, but edit and split again. So basically what I'm doing is creating a little bubble right in the middle that I want to take out. Okay. Select that bubble and hit 
delete. And then I choose whatever my sound effect is going to be and drag it in. Okay, so now as we play through, brain. There we go. And then we're going to go. What do I do to get rid of all that? All right, we're going to be better. <laughs> okay, so. I promised if we had a little bit of extra time, I'd show you how to add visuals to this as well. Okay, so you can you actually do that right here in GarageBand. We can add visuals to it and then save it out as a movie file. Or you could take that MP3 file that we created and move it over to another program. We could use something like iMovie, or um, if you're working on a PC, we could use Windows Movie Maker, or not PhotoStream, but yeah, Windows Movie Maker would probably be the one we'd choose. No, we could use Photo Story. That would work too. Okay. Um, the nice thing about iMovie and uh, Movie Maker is that we can actually insert video clips as well. So if we wanted to actually video record the student reading the story for part of it, we could show the student re reading the story. That would be kind of fun. All right. So what we'll do, heading back to the beginning here, how do we add a new track? <laughs> the, track, track. the track menu. I didn't give that away at all. Actually, I'm going to say show podcast track on this one. This one's a little tricky. The podcast track allows me to show, to put artwork in, to go along with it, okay? So show podcast track. See, and it says drag artwork here. Okay. So I could go out and get the cover art for the story and put it on here. I could, if I wanted to, right here on my Mac, I could open up like photo booth and take pictures of them, of the pages of the book, and put them in. I could take them with my digital camera, etc. The problem with doing all of that is that now we're starting to run into some copyright issues if I'm putting this up online. So if I'm using the actual artwork from the book, then I'm going to run into copyright issues. If I'm keeping it within my class, it's not as big a deal, but if I'm putting it up online, that I'm getting into trouble. Yeah? What if you're just going to send if you're a librarian? Would you send this out as a library? Is that a copyright? That would be a copyright infringement as well. So the audio would be okay, but sending out the, the graphics with the it would not. Okay, yeah. The audio should be fine. Yeah, as long as they're checking out the book to go along with it. Yeah. And that's my question. Okay. I've been wanting to make audio books, like just record books for my classroom, but I was wondering about copyright issues. Yeah, as long as if you're not charging for them mm -hmm. and you're not sending the artwork along with then you're okay. But if it's just the audio, like if I want it, there's some books I want put on MP3s or CDs, I could record those myself mm -hmm. or I'd have the students. Yeah, okay. Yep. Um, generally, you want to keep them for not too long. Um, I mean, the, the general rule is that after three years, we're going to start asking permission for things if we're a nonprofit educational type of organization. But this is your audio recording of the work, so you in fact created it. So it's in kind of one of those little gray areas that we really probably don't need permission for. You're not charging as a library or as a school teacher, so that really helps us out there. Jenny, did you have a question? Oh, thank you. All right, so it's pretty easy. If you, you can go out online and just find the cover art if you want to. You could have the children draw their own pictures to go along with the story. That's Fun, super fun, and then you can drag those in here. Um, and once they're on their com on your computer, you can either open like your finder window and just go and find the pictures that you want to use. Or if you've put them in iPhoto, they'll be sitting here waiting for you. And I just drag them over, and they pop onto that little timeline, as many as I want. So I could do a different picture for each page of the book. Yes. It actually does go that full time. I know it's a little weird. And unfortunately, GarageBand isn't really meant for creating videos. So you can't really preview it, watch it. You have to finish it and then see it. So it's a little scary. I personally do most of this in iMovie. But it can be done here in GarageBand if you really don't want to master another tool. <coughs> Please. Yeah, How cool would it be if your students did the illustrations or picture <coughs> illustrations? Like if they <coughs> set up the scenes and you took those pictures. How yeah, they could yeah. act them out, they could draw them. I mean, there's like a myriad of things that you could do, and that certainly isn't copyright.
infringement. Right, exactly. Fun time. Okay, so not that much more work to add the graphics and then you just export it again. But how, with what you said, I'm so excited. I can't stand it, but I'm trying to figure out how in a classroom to, with one computer, centers to make it accessible here after we published it. Oh, pop it up on your website. If you have a class website. But I need to use it in class. Put it on the school server. So you can put it on like your shared drive for the school, and then anybody can listen to it from their phones. They know where to get it. Yeah. So you could go to the computer lab and everybody could look at it and read it. Or mm -hmm. you could just two or three students sitting around the computer or the two computers. Mm -hmm. Or the projector. Yeah, the projector. projector. Yep. So put the computer, the projector, and have the shared drive. Yeah, okay. definitely. Sure. So benefits the books that they wrote also. Yes. Yeah, there's the next extension of it. Yep. So if you've got some first graders, second graders, third graders who are learning to write stories, and then they're allowed to read and record their story, and that becomes part of the class archive too. Fantastic. I was just thinking too, it would be fun. A lot of people do like a start of the week or something. And if you have them read their book that week. Yes. And then at the end of the year, you'd have them all in iTunes as a track, bring them all onto a CD and send it home with them at the end of the year, and they have a track of all their friends reading a book. Yeah. How fun is that? Yeah. Spectacular. Yes. And we could also do the same thing with their buddy reader class. Yeah. So their buddy reader class could read a book for them each week, and they leave school with that, that whole list, too. Or the big okay. kids writing books for the little kids. Because yes. Each upper grade, and that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Like yes. Eighth graders writing books for first graders. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Exactly. And what a great service project too for the sixth graders at the school to record books to go into the library for the younger students who are learning how to read. That they could go check out the book and the CD of their, you know, the sixth grader reading it. Spectacular stuff. Okay. All right. So hopefully you're leaving with an understanding that this is super easy, especially if you have a Mac. <laughs> um, and just uh, unlimited possibilities. And what you really get is the knowledge that this is a proven tech. So this isn't one where you're just walking in saying, I just want to use tech because they say we should use tech. This is one that we know for a fact that audiobooks improve academic performance, improve reading ability, improve attitudes toward reading. Spectacular. Okay? You said you had a website you were going to post some. Yes. So it's D R S U Z Y C O X. I'm really not that stuck up. It's just that that was the only way I could get my name without lots of numbers after it. <laughs> I must have the doctor at the beginning. So it's Dr. Susie Cox, D-R-S-U-Z-Y-C-O-X dot com. If you go there, you can get the recording I've been making this whole time, the website with free sound effects, and the list of possible softwares that you could use. Okay, so I'll put those up right when we're done here. It does actually. In fact, there have been some studies done, particularly with those fourth grader readers that we mentioned that are really struggling with the with the motivation and things like that. And uh, they've read books like Harry Potter, so really long, good long books. Would you still just refer to change the time? Um, Right, you don't need the ding for the chapter books as much. So you, they could do maybe a chapter at a time, and that's their you know, 20 minutes of reading or whatever for the night. Or and The nice thing about it is you can integrate it all fairly seamlessly. So if they have 15 minutes, they just read for 15 minutes and record the whole time. And that, that's less fuss, too, because they're not having to switch back and forth putting in the sound. They just hit record, read for 15 minutes, and then stop. And then when they come back the next day, they do the same thing. And again, that's another reason to have something like this because you're not going to have the variability in the sound as they lean in and out. Okay, So if you are a classroom teacher or a librarian, think about writing a little mini grant to get a classroom set of these or a couple of these. But again, I mean, you can go to Walmart right now and buy a set for 10 or 15 bucks. Okay. I've been with students with fluency and let them hear themselves read. It's fabulous nice. for fluency. Kids working on building fluency, mm -hmm. they can hear, you know, beginning and then working on a passage of the week and at end of the week, they just hear the difference. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And if any of you are world language teachers, too, this is a great opportunity. This is a, another easy way for them to practice their speaking in their target language. And they can hear themselves back, or they could even send the recording to you, and you could listen to it and give them critique. So, Jenny. A colleague just um, taught me this idea of a book in an hour and group. 
kids take one chapter and then they become the expert on that one chapter, you could do the same thing with yeah. this. Or they could create their own summary and their own mini story of this chapter and connect those all. So you're not actually doing the book, right? but you're creating um, something else about the book. I don't, it's, I don't yeah. know if it's a summary. But that's book. actually how I taught my daughter how to do summaries. Because she was, you know, in first and second grade when you say, summarize this book for me. They just tell you the whole thing again. Mm -hmm. Right? So I taught her to summarize by doing this with her. I said, okay, you have one minute that we're going to record. So we'll go ahead and write out what you could say in one minute. And then we'll record it for you. And then she drew pictures to go along with it. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, and you could even do things like in your content area. I was just thinking like social mm -hmm. studies or science. You know, do... Tell the story of George Washington. Something, you know. Yeah. Something different instead of just the normal, you know, book report or, you know, things that I did in school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. These, I mean, it just is starting yeah. to open up the possibilities of options for you. So, all right, I'm going to let you go so you don't miss another session. But thank you all so much.